our mind is a thinking machine. Thinking is an activity. All activities take place within a time frame. Therefore, the activity called thinking, that is the activity of the mind, is also take place within a time frame made of the past, the present and the future. Past is dead. The future is unborn. The present is the meeting point between the dead past and the and the unborn future. The present too turns immediately into the past. Then the present becomes a memory. All our thinking is generated by our memories projected into our desires, projected by our desires into the future. The basic uh, desire of our mind is the desire for happiness. The mind is always seeking happiness. That capacity for search is called in Pali, the Buddhist language, as tanna. It comes from a Sanskrit word called trishna, literally meaning thirst. The word tanna derived from Trishna is used by the Buddha to denote the basis of all our desires. And that basis is divided by the Buddha into three in his first sermon called Dhamma Chakka Patana Sutra where he refers to Kama Tanha, Bhava Tanha, Vibhava Tanha. Kama Tanha is the basic desire to satisfy sensory needs, satisfaction of sensory desires. Those desires need certain objects. For example, the sensory organ called eye <coughs> needs pleasant sights to see things that are pleasant. The ear needs to hear things that are pleasant. The nose needs to smell something pleasant. The tongue needs to taste something pleasant. The body needs pleasant contacts. And the mind is also sense organs that always needs happiness by satisfaction satisfying these sensory desires. But all our sensory desires 
cannot be satisfied fully because when one desire is satisfied, another desire crops up. And other thing is the satisfaction of a desire cannot last long. They are born to decay and die. All present experiences you become tired of. That means you want to change that dis present sensory desire to some other desire when you become tired of even satisfying sensory needs. In this way, the mind is always active, always ready for action to seek pleasure for sensory organs including the external internal sense organ called mind and the five external sense organs. And the satisfaction also depends on different tastes of different people. Some may like hot food, some may like cool food, some may like hot drinks, some may like cool drinks. Some may like sweets, some may like bitter. Like that, our taste varies from person to person and also sometimes from time to time. What we desire at the childhood is not what we desire in our youth. What we desire in the youth is not what we desire in our old age. Therefore, sensory needs vary from time to time and from person to person. And those needs are the generators of all our thinking. Basically, to make our mind happy. We are always in search of happiness. And it is a never-ending search, as I mentioned earlier, when we are happy by satisfying a particular need, that happiness cannot last long, because both happiness and unhappiness are born to decay and die. And all desires are mental dreams. Therefore, our mind is a dreamy mind. We dream on the basis of our past experiences. We dream in the present, but the mind has run from the past memories into the future dreams. That is how the mind is active every moment, from moment to moment. As all activities are based on desires, when desires cease, when the desires are extinct, the mental activities do cease. The basic mental activity is thinking that get manifested in a time frame. Time is always related to the mental time. It's always related to mental activity. When there is no mental activity, there is no sense of time in the mind. The mind becomes timeless. Buddha refers to the supreme bliss called Nirvana 
that you realize at the enlightenment as timeless is words you that is akaliko free of time there is no time duration time is really not a thing but a mental concept according to physical scientist both time and space are absent in a black hole it is the big bang of a black hole that turned into a universe and it is said by the scientists time and space were born at the big bang and they were not there in the black hole in time there is birth decay and death the any moment it born it decays and it vanishes any minute any second any minute any hour any day any week any month they are the time durations they have a beginning and that time is spent that is the decay of the time and it ends after one second another second after one minute another minute after one hour another hour after one day another day they are happening and the mind is experiencing thus the time consists of the dead past the past is dead the unborn future and the present moment in between the meeting point of the past and the present is ephemeral instant it disappears as it, as it appears no time is taken for appearance or disappearance the present moment therefore it is a timeless moment but an eternal moment it is a present that continues from moment to moment therefore it is called the eternity of the moment a moment is dying for another moment to appear therefore time is a series of moments that are born to die and our mental activities also all men- mental activities are born to die in that time frame time is always active in our mind the mental time is always associated with mental activities when there are no mental activities there is no beginning and there is no ending there is no past there is no present there is no future and that is the type of mind that remains after enlightenment a mind free from all activities a basic activity is thinking and uh, at the first pain of joy with the said his mind became free of thinking the thinking processes came to an end we think of satisfying our sensory desires that is the basic we think in search of happiness we we are in, the mind is in search of happiness because there is no real happiness in the mind 
द माइंड इज हैप्पी वेन द सेंसरी नीड्स आर सेटिस्फाइड बट सेटिस्फैक्शन कैन लास्ट लॉन्ग एन अदर सेंसरी नीड एपियस फॉर सेटिस्फैक्शन therefore the mind is constantly underneath the mind there is unhappiness no perfect happiness that is the mundane mind but the supra mundane mind realizes at the enlightenment it is nothing new that supra mundane mind is behind the mundane mind that man, mind is free of thinking mundane mind is filled with thinking and associated feelings super mundane mind is empty of thoughts and feelings and it is called therefore void or emptiness the pali word used by the buddha is sunyata that is the type of mind he realized at the enlightenment the mind free of sankara mental formations thoughts are mental images mental images are not actual reality though they appear to be real we can see our image in a mirror but that is not what we are there is not ourselves we see images in a tv screen in a computer screen in a cinema cinema screen they are only images images are not realities but the whole world that they experience are nothing but mental images the mental images formed by the mind due to the signals given by the sensory organs and recognized by the past memories retained in our brain they all are illusions that is why hinduism refer to the entire world that they experience as a maya an illusion not an actual reality all thought forms are illusions that is what the buddha's first disciple after listening to his first sermon called dhamma chakka path realized as mentioned in the same sutra same discourse by the buddha himself the ascetic called an konanya got after listening to the the their dawn in him the i to see the dhamma the mental capacity to see the mental images in their true nature and he realized yanki samudhi dhamma sabbanta nirodhamanti all mental images that means all thoughts are born to die they disappear thoughts are as i mentioned is taking place within a time frame and when there is no time frame in an enlightened mind it becomes empty of thoughts and it is, as i mentioned it is referred to as sunyata and it is a timeless mind imageless mind formless mind non thinking mind non thinking mind is a timeless mind thinking is an activity it needs energy thinking although it happens automatically within the mind thinking itself is tiring that is why the mind need the rest by sleeping the mind goes to sleep when it is fully tired by thinking the 
enlightenment are called Jagaryanu Yoga, it meaning is they do not sleep, free of sleeping. They need no sleep because that mind is not tired. Tiredness has completely disappears. That is the sorrow that disappears from the mind. They have a tireless mind, timeless mind, non-active mind, non-thinking mind. And that is the supreme bliss realized by the Buddha. For that, on the path to enlightenment, one gets the training of not thinking. That is what Buddha advised an ascetic called Bahya in the Bahya Sutta. Not to think of any mental awareness or sensation. Just be aware of sensations, but don't think of them. That is how the mind is trained not to think. Ultimately, non thing becomes permanent, that is enlightenment. Though thinking ceases at the enlightenment, sensing does not cease. Because the body is active, body is active means body is living and sense organs are living and they have their own responses to sense objects. And the enlightened mind becomes aware of them, and that is called Sanya Vedaita in Pali, Buddhist language. Sanya are signals. Vedaita means being aware. But they do not think of what they become aware of. They have no need to think. We think of things that we like, dislike, or ignorant of. Their mind is free from liking, that is called rag in Pali, disliking, dosa in Pali, and ignorance called moha in Pali. Therefore, their mind is free from the need for thinking. The need for thinking is created by desires, positive as likes, negative as dislikes, and neutralized ignorance. And such a mind is called Vitaragi, free of attachment to think that they like, Vitadosi, free of resentment of things that they dislike, and Vitamohi, free of ignorance. Awareness is there, but that awareness also ceases at the transfer of Sanya Vedaita Niroda, into which the enlightened one gets absorbed to take a mental and physical rest. But that awareness called Sanya Vedaita knowing signals completely ceases at the final passing away called Nirvana. And that is the ultimate bliss, where there are no activities of both the mind and the body after the final passing away, because the enlightened ones are never reborn. Naijatu Gabba Seyam Punreti has said in the Sutra for Karnamitta. Uh, they, no, they are not born. Nibbanti dira yata ayam padipo. They are blown off like a brick of a lamb, as said in the Ratana Sutra. And that is the ultimate bliss, the ending of both mental and physical activities that happens within a time frame. Mental activities cease at the enlightenment and physical activities too ceases at the final passing away. And that state is timeless because time is always related to 
activities. The mind free from activities is timeless and that is the ultimate supreme bliss.